Welcome everybody, it's Wild West Stacker, and today we're going to be talking about the TEPs from Atmex. Do you collect them? Alright, well, let's talk about it. Let's just start by showing off how I'm storing all these TEP packages. And uh, yes, I picked up another, uh, what is this, a bullion box from Star Wars. This is the Darth Vader version. It's kind of cool. It tells you the mintages down here. Um, I only have a couple of those coins. Didn't pick up tubes. But it works really good for holding these TEPs. Uh, filled it up quite a bit, though. I can't really shove any more in there. It's pretty firm. And we've got some other things. I guess we can go over that, too. But the main thing is these TEPs. Are you guys collecting them? I hope you're not stacking them. They are a little pricey. But certain coins, I really like them for. For instance, this Sonic one, you get the color, you get the gold ring, and you get the Sonic on the back. I think the only improvement is I wish it had something about the mintages on here. But I like these. If you don't want to buy a capsule, it already comes in it. Pretty cool little piece. I'm digging it. So let's start checking out some other ones in here. And essentially, this is my own little hotel. I know a lot of you have gotten slabs inside of little hotels like this but this is my TEP hotel let's see what we got in here uh, this is one of the first peanuts ones when they came out I stopped collecting this series because I didn't like the stickers on them but luckily this one did not have a sticker Pac-Man kind of the same thing but look at how cool that is it has the whole scoreboard on the back the game so that's actually a really good TEP package uh, now when I was picking these up it's mainly because it was actually cheaper to order it this way instead of buying a capsule I didn't even realize these are first strike cool so it's a type one and I'll probably keep that one because it might be a collector someday since that was the year they switched it all out and another peanuts all right let's take a look at some more in here it's your kind of fun you can touch them with your raw hands you don't have to wear gloves so there's another ASE looks like I picked up what three of those peanuts ones this is my only maple leaf, and I was curious, would it milk spot? And it kind of looks like it is. Look at that. Jeez. And that's 2021, so this should have the Mint Shield ID. So I don't know if that's frosting. No, that's totally milk spotting. So once again, this is proof that the Mint Shield ID is not perfect. I still think Mexico has probably the best uh, milk spotting technique out there another pac-man oh yes i did get a baby yoda coin and this is actually what i wanted to talk about specifically uh this week on atmex there was a brand new coin dropped and it's the 2022 baby yoda the baby grogu he's eating a bowl of soup in it and it is a coin it'll just say 2022 down here just like this one now i ordered some regular capsule or non-capsuled coins of it like this I skipped out on the TEP, and let me explain why. Uh, for whatever reason, Atmex is deciding now to do serialized TEP packages. So the new Baby Yoda coin, it says it's a number out of 1,000, and you can buy it. They are charging extra for it. But it's not actually the first 1,000, like these PCGS first strikes. These would actually be the ticket, but they're capitalizing on people wanting serialized coins. And so it's not serialized on the coin anywhere, remember. It's only on this little piece of paper in the packaging. And it will give you a number like 69 out of 1,000, for instance. Uh, I would stay far away from that nonsense. That is horrible. Uh, yeah, if you just want to give away your money, I guess go ahead and buy those. Because I will not be picking any of those up ever. Hakuna Matata coin. And the real reason I picked up this is I was upset that it didn't say Hakuna Matata anywhere on the coin. So this is a 2021. And if you look at the bottom, it says, what, one ounce, three nines, fine silver, Disney. You got Timon, Pumbaa, Simba. Look, it doesn't say Hakuna Matata anywhere. I thought it might say it like in the tree here, but nope. Only if you get the TEP package. So that was my choice there. Galaga, once again, had the cool picture. 
So, you know, these are fun collectors. Uh, let's just switch it up a little and show my few. I don't have a lot of slabs, guys. I'm not really a slab person. This is it. Uh, I've got some of these and a couple here and another one right here. So let's see what we got. 1983 Olympics. Oh, yes. Now, I picked these up um, because they were really inexpensive. They were only 69s. And look at that. Quite an interesting eagle, right? Well, this eagle is actually the first silver dollar that was produced since the peace dollar. That's right, the 1983S, and it was an Olympics. This is the proof version. You can see a little mint mark right down there, a little S. And I thought it was an okay looking coin. Uh, the front definitely looks better than the, the eagle. Ugh. But then I found out that the very next year in 84, they did the Olympics again. So this is another 69, and it's an S, so it's a proof version. But check out this eagle. This is probably my favorite eagle so far. You know, for 1984, isn't that a really good looking eagle? Ugh, I love it. I think that's a great looking coin. And again, it is a silver dollar, and these are just like Morgan's or Peace dollars, so they're like a little over three quarters of an ounce of silver. All right, now I did pick up some of these 2021 Type 2s. Instead of the TEPs, I decided to try the slabs. And yes, I am trying the NGC first. I kind of like the white background. Just personal preference, it's the only reason. So Type 2, I figured I'd pick these up because hey, they might go up in value one day. So just a couple of them, see, one, two, three. Nothing too big a deal. All right, my last slab, and this is in my whole stack, guys. I don't have a lot of slabs. It's a 2018 Panda. And I won this one from Chris Vermillion on Vermillion Coins on YouTube. Great channel. I would definitely check him out. Look at that. It's a 70. Uh, I really wouldn't collect these too hard. I know they're only 30 grams, as you can see right there at the top. A little short of a troy ounce. So cool looking panda. Glad it's in my stack, but I'm not going to be adding any more of these. All right. So let's just get all the slabs out of the way. Let's go back to the box. See what else we can find inside of here. Okay, so looks like this is going to be the Godzilla series. And this is when I first started the TEPs, actually. I think there's another one in here. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Got some more. Got some more. Okay. Now, the first two beautiful coins are the King Kong and the Godzilla. And if you can see, they're pure silver. They are coins. The exact same reverse on them. I love those. And I decided to get the whole set and i was a little disappointed each one of these is a sticker it's just a sticker on top of it guys i've seen people melt these uh gold spartan was melting them on instagram although i believe he was doing the colorized peanuts one he melted like a bunch of those they still at least have the cool back the reverse um which is pure silver two dollars uh, but i was a little disappointed in these i thought they would be something different and they're not so just beware there are colorized coins out there. I prefer the pure silvers. All right, what else we got in here? Ooh, there's another Pac-Man. I think that one matches this guy. Yep, cool. And there's the Miss Pac-Man. Pretty sweet. All right, a couple more. Okay, I did pick up the Assassin's Creed and I only picked up the pure silver one. I skipped all the colorized ones because there were quite a few out and they're still coming out. And the octopus coin. I ordered this one because I was trying to just get it outside of the capsule and they were all sold out. So my only way was to get a PCGS first strike. Eh, whatever. It still looks good, so why not? Okay, so those are actually all my TEPs. Everything right there. We're gonna go into the rest in this box i mean it still holds a little bit more let's see what else we got it holds the geigers in there pretty good and these are one ounce geigers one ounce one ounce so there we go there's four ounces right there I like these um and fyi these are black light illuminated so if you get a uv light a black light it'll light up right there and it will light up the number on all of these 
And an FYI, the Atmex versions, which fill out my box. This is it. Here we go. Now I know I have more of these, but this one just is in there. So let's show it. Okay, so this is a three nines fine. It is serialized. Look, it's got a AV sixty nine two three nine one. Cool number. And compared to the other Geigers, yep, you can see there serialized. And so on the Atmex, the Atmex and the number will light up under a black light, just like these will. Pretty cool, huh? Actually, you know what? I think I have a black light. Let me just grab it real quick. Okay, everybody, I am back with a black light straight out of the 90s. Look how big this scene is. We used to put posters under this to make it light up in our bedrooms, guys. It was awesome back in the day. All right, so let's uh, quick try to show this black light feature. It's going to be a little hard because you should be doing this in the dark, but hey, we'll try to make it work. Okay, so you can kind of see that it's lighting up a little bit there, and you can kind of see this purple. But I believe the Atmex logo lights up a little bit better. Let's try it out. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can really see it light up. Let's see if I can hold it up. That works. You can see the Atmex and the serial number are both lit up. And then you pull it up, and it's gone. Let's try that on the Geiger now. I mean, you could definitely see it's got like the diamond pattern and the serial number. When you move it up, it just turns blue. Not bad, but boy, I think they put more of the fluorescent whatever it is in the Atmex ones. Pretty crazy, huh? All right. Well, that was fun. We checked out some blacklight stuff, some Geigers, some TEPs. And the whole point is, is this stuff all is coming out on Black Friday, uh, the new baby Grogu TEP. And I would pick up just the non-capsuled or just this TEP, the PCGS. Remember, I would stay away from that serialized one. I just think that's a joke. But with Black Friday, uh, I just want to let everybody know one thing I do every year is I go around picking up stuff like this. Uh, this is a leftover from last year. And I get knives like this on sale for about $5 a piece. And they make great gifts. So this one, let's see if it has a name. Nope, just a number. The CK112S. All right, so it's a Smith & Wesson. It is a thumb stud flipper. So you just flip it out. There's no spring tension or anything. Tonto blade. And I like the serrated edges. It's so hard to find knives like this nowadays because for cutting rope, this is what you use all the time. And we do that quite a bit. Look at that though. It's got a deep carry pocket clip. So it's got plastic handles. So that's kind of cheap. Just a liner lock. But look at that for a cheap knife. So I pick these up. I usually buy three or four of, I mean, it could be Smith & Wesson. This year I was on Blade HQ and they had some knives called Shrade. They were on sale for $5 and $6 a piece. Same thing, serrated, about a three inch blade. These are great stocking stuffers. I highly recommend it. So if you're looking for a great gift, check it out. Cause how can you go wrong for like six bucks? All right, everybody. Well, my time is up. I hope you had fun. We checked out some cool TEP silver, but now you're on the train and we're moving on to Mrs. Coin Crew. So everybody, make sure you click the link down in the chat. We're moving on now. Thanks so much for stopping by. This is Wild West saying everybody have a good one.